back in 1993, the man with the biggest quads in bodybuilding, the quad father himself, the golden eagle, Tom Platts, challenged Dr. Squat, the first man to squat a thousand pounds without a lifting suit, to a squat competition. Now it was done for exhibition and promotional purposes, but it still tells us a lot about how these men trained and what their genetics were. Now both of these men weighed in at 198 pounds, so they're very evenly matched that way. But Dr. Fred Hatfield, Dr. Squat, was 51 at the time. And because this is fit and 50, we have to give him an extra high five for doing this at that age. Now Tom, he was 38 at the time. An interesting side note on uh, Fred Hatfield, when he actually broke the thousand pound squat barrier, he was 45. He was always an athletic man though. He started out competing as a high level gymnast and then moved into bodybuilding and then finally settled into powerlifting. The quad father's bodybuilding career started when he was only 10 years old. That's when his parents bought him his first weight set for Christmas. And it extended right through to 1995, which was his last competition. Although at this point, he hadn't competed at a competition and since 1987. But what was the results of this competition? Well, as might be expected, Dr. Fred Hatfield won quite easily with a still impressive amount of 855 pounds to Tom's 765. But then they decided to make it a little bit more interesting and they lowered the weight to 525 pounds to see who could do the most repetitions at that weight. This time, Tom Platts won quite handily with 23 reps in perfect form to Dr. Squat's measly 11. So why was the younger man with the more muscular legs unable to squat more than the older man with the tiny legs? Well, there's a lot of reasons why powerlifters are stronger than bodybuilders, including leverage advantages based on tendon insertions. But we're going to take a little closer look at muscle fiber types. Now both bodybuilders and powerlifters have type 2 muscle fibers just as you and I have type 2 muscle fibers. But powerlifters tend to have a bit more of this type 2. But it's the type 1 that the powerlifters don't care about but bodybuilders should. Now these type 1 muscle fibers are endurance muscle fibers but they do grow. Granted not as much as the type 2 muscle fiber, but as a bodybuilder trying to get the maximum growth out of your body, no fiber should be left behind. And Tom Platts was famous for his high intensity, high rep training that really targeted these type 1 muscle fibers. Bodybuilders tend to diversify their training a bit more than power lifters. Well, yes, they do lift heavy and with low reps. But they also incorporate techniques like time under tension, more isolation moves, and really focus on that mind-muscle connection over just moving the weight. So what's the takeaway for us regular training guys who don't plan on ever competing as powerlifters or getting up on the bodybuilding stage? Well, we really need to define our goals. If we want to get stronger, we might want to train more like a powerlifter. If we're looking to get a little larger and more muscular, we might want to train a bit more like a bodybuilder. If longevity is our goal, we might want to take a closer look at our cardiovascular training. So we really need to define the goal, then design the plan. But odds are, we really are going to want to do a blend of all three. This is Lawrence from Fit and 50, signing out, keep working out, Keep having fun, keep smashing those goals, and we will talk to you again in that next video.